but you're covering a lot of other cool stuff around the state. Uh, but you got your start. You you kind of searched out for about a uh, a year, I understand, uh, in before you started it. And yeah. then tell us about that. And then and then when you put the put the team together to do it, and and who right. writes and who writes for it. Right. So we, um, I, I, it was just a, a journey of my own learning, basically just to figure out how to start a magazine. You know, how do you get magazines on a newsstand? How do you print the magazine? How do you find a printer? What kind of paper are you going to use? You know, fonts and, and so many new words and parts of the business that I had no uh, vocabulary for even at the time. Um, sales. I mean, <laughs> I definitely did not have a sales background. Uh, but I knew that was how we were going to make money and um, support what we were doing was advertising sales, magazine sales, um, getting the magazine out, distributing it, getting in people's hands, marketing ourselves. Uh, so these were all things that I had to really try to learn about before deciding to, to take this venture on. And, um, you know, I tried to do my homework. I put on my reporter hat and I reported the business of publishing for that year and really built out a business plan and had my husband as sort of my biggest sort of critic and cheerleader at the same time. So he would really just rip apart the business plan um, every week. And then, oh, this, you know, what about that? What about this? I still don't understand it. What's your vision? What's your goal? Um, so I had that um, sounding board, which I do think is so important for people who are starting a business is to have someone you trust who can really poke holes in your plan and push you uh, to really know why you want to do something. And if you really do want to do something, if you should do something. Um, so I feel lucky in having him to kind of be that sounding board and that other voice of, you know, the contrarian voice a lot of times. Um, but it definitely makes you kind of look closer and take a harder look at what you're about to do. But yeah, so I, I sweated the business, put together this business plan. And once I felt like, okay, I, I know the different areas that I need. I've got content, editorial content. That's easy. That's overflowing. There's more stories in Florida than we could ever cover. Everybody loves Florida. I think a lot of people want to read about Florida, even outside of Florida. Um, you know, we are going to make money based on advertising, which is kind of a traditional model. Um, print advertising led digital advertising was still very small at that stage. It was like, well, we'll just give people digital ads because you know, we, our traffic also on the site was a brand new site. It was a brand new brand. You know, I could control the magazine because I could print a certain number and I just had to get those magazines out circulating through subscribers, through events, through hotel rooms, through newsstands. Um, so I could kind of set the rate base on that and control it. But with digital, I mean, it was so hard. You, you don't just start a website and have, you know, a million views and impressions the first week. So Selling digital advertising came over the years. You know, we were able to build an audience and um, with great content. And then we've been able to monetize it through uh, digital advertising and just basically giving our partners and our advertisers access to our audience. So, so anyway, just to, sig to figuring out the pieces of the puzzle that I needed to start it, uh, it took about a year. And then I knew I needed people to help me along the way. So, the genesis of the idea of Flamingo also came out like a lot of entrepreneurs, probably um, entrepreneurs is just having conversations with people in coffee shops and brainstorm sessions. And, and I love the creative process. So that part of it was so fun meeting with other writers locally in Jacksonville, meeting with other people who want, you know, are invested in, yeah, Florida needs a great magazine. And, and they were published in national publications or they were had great ideas for content and, um, but then when you really want someone to like help you do it and, and put the work in and roll up the sleeves and stay up all night and do what it takes to produce anything really, but a, a new business, but definitely a magazine, a first edition of a magazine, that's a special group of people. Um, so I, I definitely sought out some certain people didn't work out and then organically kind of got connected with the first group of people that kind of helped from the very beginning, my original uh, assistant editor, she was a friend of my sister-in-law's who lives here, lived here, is going to live here again soon. But anyway, she introduced me to this friend of hers in the neighborhood. She said, Oh, Christina was a writer in New York city. She worked at all these big publications, people, te teen people, this, that, and the other thing. So, you know, it was through connections locally that I ended up assembling, you know, the, the start of a team, you know, I had my, my executive assistant editor, if you will, who was kind of my right hand on the editorial side, 
Um, got connected through her to our creative director who helped me sort of visualize, bring all the, bring everything to life visually. And she's still uh, with me today, my creative director. She, you know, helped me come up with the logo and just the whole aesthetic of the magazine, which kind of melds old Florida and new Florida together um, with that kind of art deco flavor, modern flavor, but still with ties to, you know, old Florida and that kind of nostalgic feel. Um, So the creative director, the editorial side, that was all the creative. Um, And then I really needed to seek out, you know, some people on the sales side and the marketing side, which is still, still my um, area of improvement um, that I need to always continue working on. I think sales is kind of the, the beast of every entrepreneur, but um, yeah, those, the early group of people, a lot of them are still with me. Some other people came on board shortly after we launched with the first issue. Um, But along the, the, during the time that I was kind of deciding on the business plan, I was also researching writers and photographers and people who create content throughout the state. I wanted to showcase the best writers, photographers, people throughout Florida and just trying to find who those people were. And so I had also reached out to them. And one of the very first people that I reached out to is an author who I mentioned earlier, Diane Roberts. And she's a professor at Florida State and she teaches English in the English department. And she's um, really focuses on their PhD. I think she also has some undergrad students too, but she's an author, she's a writer, she's an NPR contributor. She's fabulous. And um, she's such a unique voice. And I had this idea for a column called Capital Dame and and Diane was going to be the anchor voice of it, if she would agree. So I basically went over to Tallahassee with my laptop and a, one slide with just a picture of what the front of the website might look like. And, um, you know, sat down with Diane, she agreed to meet with me who she had never met before. And I just had emailed her and said, would you mean, I want you to write for this magazine that doesn't exist yet about Florida. And she was like, sure, let's have a drink at Waterworks. And so she and I met at Waterworks. Waterworks. Uh, What a place. Um, Well, you know, I just wanted to pause there because I thought there was so many things here just to reflect on in your story. Uh, One, I thought it was very innovative that you, uh, you took your reporting background and skill set to approach uh, sort of researching and re- like almost like you were a reporter uh, on how how does a magazine or a print publication start what's the business plan what's that aspect so I think that was interesting that it was a skill set you had let me let me let me approach this as a, like a reporter like I'm reporting on how this is done but I'm doing it for my own uh, my own interest and then secondly that you had this collaborative element uh, with your husband first, uh, at, with the, you know, looking at the business plan, giving you, uh, you know, honest feedback, honest criticism. And he, he might've had some, some background of that. And so I think that's good. So people have to understand like the, uh, you know, understanding your skill set, uh, collaborating with others, uh, getting the feedback because you don't want the feedback to come later when it's way too late. Um, and then, and then also the fact that you put together this team, and you just tried to pull in people that had a passion and interest and the ability to work hard and work those crazy hours uh, that's demanding of a journalist. Um, and, then, and, then, and then, of course, seeking out expert advice, right? And, and going to Tallahassee and going to FSU and speaking. And I think you earlier you mentioned relying on some of the contacts you had at Georgetown, some of the professors right, right there. And, and looking at, because as you said, you, you really, I think your passion and your background is a journalist, a reporter, a writer but you need to have a lot more hats if you're running, you know, advertising sales. I mean, it's a business that that requires a lot of things. Uh, And and of course you want to write and do these things, but, uh, but, but, and then you had the special passion for Florida too, and trying to, you know, have a mission of a magazine that brings it all together. So, so I think there's a lot to be said. And uh, I think it's it's another reason why uh, I think others uh, recognize, and I did too, to have you on because you are an agent of innovation and, (laughs) 